Chapter 69, The Defective Robot. Hello, Rosam, Unit 7134. We are the Ricos. We are here to retrieve all Rosam units. The cold, flat voice came from the Rico One. He and his partner stood absolutely still and kept their glowing eyes locked on their target. There are four others, said Roz, but they are dead. We have already located the remains of the other units, said Rico One. We will collect them later. Now come with us. The three Ricos motioned Roz to the airship, but she didn't move. Where have you come from, she said. The Ricos turned and stared at Roz. Do not ask questions, said Rico One. Where will you take me? Do not ask questions. Why must I leave? Do not ask questions. I will not go anywhere until I get some answers. There was a brief silence as Rico One computed his next move, and then he began to speak. One year ago, a cargo ship carrying 500 Rosam units was sunk by a hurricane. 495 units have been retrieved from the ocean floor. We have come in search of the last five, and we have located them. Rosam Unit 7134, you are the property of Tech Lab Industries. You will return to the factory where the makers will refurbish you and sell you to a worksite. You will then live on the worksite indefinitely. Now come with us. But I live here, said Ross. That is incorrect. Rosam Unit 7134. Any further resistance will be proof of defectiveness, and, you will, and we will deactivate you. But Roz had more questions. Who are the makers? What is my purpose? Why can I not ask questions? This unit is defective, said Rico Juan to his partners. Commence deactivation. In perfect unison, the Ricos stepped toward Roz. They raised their blocky hands ready to restrain their target, ready to shut her down with the press of a button. But a loud squawk and a streak of feathers cut them off. Stay away from my mama! Bright Bill swooped into the meadow and started hopping around, ready to defend his mother. The Rico stopped and looked down at the goose. Of course, they didn't understand his words. They only heard meaningless squawks. And then they heard their target squawking back to him. Bright Bill, get out of here, said Roz in the language of the animals. These robots are dangerous. What do they want? They want to take me away. The Rico st stared at their target, trying to understand why she was exchanging noises with a goose. And then new noises began rising up. Rustlings and shrieks echoed from the forest. Animals were gathering. Their wild voices called out to each other. Roz needs our help. These robots want to take her away. We have to do something. The uproar in the forest grew louder and louder. The Ricos peered past Roz toward the mysterious noises but saw only foliage. Suddenly, shadows swept across the meadow and Bright Bill's flock dove into the Ricos. The geese furiously flapped and pecked and wrapped their wings around the robot faces, clinging to the Ricos like a feathery mask, distracting them, blinding them. Bright Bill turned to his mother. Run! Chapter 70, The Hunt Begins. While his flock distracted the Ricos, Bright Bill darted around behind them and desperately searched for buttons. He had once shut down his own mother with a click, but now he would do the same thing to the intruders. But he found no buttons on these robots, only smooth surfaces. Clearly the Ricos were not designed to be shut down so easily. Giant hands swung through the air and the geese were swatted away. Loudwing was plucked by her foot and flung to the ground. She crawled into the weeds as the others scrambled up and over the trees. A quick scan by the robots revealed that Roz was gone. The three Ricos turned and marched back to the airship. The door hummed open and the robots disappeared inside. And when they stepped back into the meadow, each was holding a silver rifle in his hands. The hunt for Roz was on. Without speaking, the Ricos marched away from one, from one another, fanning out in, the, in their standard search pattern. Rico 1 marched straight toward the tip, southern tip of the island. Rico 2 marched straight up the mountainside. And Rico 3 marched straight into the forest. Chapter 71, The Forest Assault. Rico 3 marched through the forest with steady, stomping strides. His blocky head swiveled from side to side, scanning for any side of Roz. But he was distracted. You see, everywhere the Rico went, he was met by streaking animals. He didn't know it, but he was in the midst of a coordinated assault. Swooper hooted orders from above. Hawks, sparrows, owls, dive in front of his eyes. Fink barked orders from below. Hares, weasels, foxes, dash between his legs. 
The forest was seething with an army of wild animals, distracting the robot, luring the terrible thing deeper into their trap. Chit Chat leaped out from the branches and clawed at the robot's eyes, yelling, Anyone who shows up on our island and tries to take my friend's mother away has a big problem, which is me. Then she leaped back into the branches. The robot pointed his rifle at the squirrel and pulled the trigger. A blazing beam of light shot through the forest and sent tree limbs crashing to the ground. It grazed poor Chit Chat, singeing the end of her tail, but she ignored the pain and scurried up to the safety of the canopy. With each stride, the ground grew a little softer and the robot sank a little deeper until he was up to his waist in thick, heavy muck. His churning legs slowed to a stop and he stood there computing whether to move forward or backward. Rico 3 was now an easy target. Begin the bombardment, ordered Swooper. The sky darkened as a swarm of birds descended from the treetops. They swooped past the robot and splattered his face with their droppings. Bird after bird swooped and splattered, and Rico's eyes were instantly caked in filth. Don't let up, screeched the owl. Give it everything you've got. There seemed to be an endless stream of birds with an endless amount of droppings. Rico III let go of his weapon and wiped his filthy face with both hands. That was the moment the fuzzy bandits had been waiting for. They dashed out from the weeds, snatched the rifle with their nimble hands, and dragged it away. Tawny and Crown Point looked on from the underbush. The buck lowered his head and the raccoons carefully placed the rifle upon his antlers. Then the deer and the raccoon slipped into the shadows. By the time Rico III realized his weapon was missing, it was too late. He let out a sad electronic tone, and then the birds continued their bombardment. The robot turned and blindingly trudged back through the muck. It was now time for the final stage of the plan. Broadfoot the bull moose emerged from the trees and stood directly in the path of the blinded robot. Rico III had no idea that his every step brought him closer to the mighty animal. When the robot was in range, Broadfoot turned and kicked back with his powerful hind legs. There was a sharp crack and dung sprayed from the Rico's head. The moose kicked again, crack, and the robot's head flopped to one side. A tear in his neck exposed a tangle of silver tubes, but Rico's, but Rico III's legs kept pumping, so Broadfoot kept kicking. He pounded the robot's head with heavy hooves, denting and crushing it into an ugly shape, and with one final crack, the head broke loose, soared through the air, and squelched into the muck. The headless robot fizzled and smoked. His legs ground to a halt, and he never moved again. Chapter 72, The Mountain Rumble Rico, too, st stood at the mouth of a cave. Razum, Unit 7134, are you in here? The only response was his own flat voice echoing back, that he sensed movement somewhere down the tunnel. So he switched on his headlights, raised his rifle, and marched inside. The Rico marched past animal bones and rock piles and wide cracks in the walls. His blocky head swiveled from side to side, scanning for any sign of Roz, but she was nowhere to be found. So he turned and marched back toward daylight, and then, did, and then a deafening roar filled the cave. From the shadows flew a giant body. Mother Bear charged into the robot and smashed him against a wall. Then Nettle and Thorn jumped in, and together the family went to work. They rammed his legs. They slashed his chest. They muscled him to the ground. On his way down, Rico too squeezed the trigger. There was a flash of blazing light, and the walls began to crumble. Nettle grabbed her brother by the scruff and pulled him outside as an avalanche of rock thundered behind them. Mother Bear howled. The rifle exploded. Stones clanged against Rico too. The avalanche slowed and settled as a cloud of dust billowed out from the cave. Mother? Nettle peered into the darkness. I'm here, said a weak voice. The young bears dashed inside and found their mother half buried. They pulled heavy stones from her body and dusted her off. I have broken bones, she rasped, but I, they will heal. Where is the robot? Rico II's headlights switched back on. Stone tum stones tumbled as the robot staggered to his feet. His body was scratched and scraped. His head was badly dented. His left arm was completely useless, so whip, it was tossed aside. Then a one-armed robot limped out of the cave and continued to hunt for Roz. 
Don't worry about me, Mother Bear growled to Nettle and Thorn. Kill the robot. With his heavy limp and his grinding gears, Rico too was easy to track. The young bears caught up with him as he was entering a grove of pines, but they didn't attack, not yet. There was a better plan to finish him off up ahead, so they hung back and followed him across the mountainside. The distant rumble of the waterfall grew louder with each passing minute, and then a slash of white appeared through the trees. Soon the robot was standing beside the roiling, fro roiling frothing river just above the falls. He was too badly damaged to leap over the falls or to wade through the rapids or to climb down the cliffs, but he had to continue his hunt for the target. So he started limping upriver in search of a safer crossing. There was a rustling and the young bears exploded out from the trees. They threw their heavy shoulders against the robot's body and he stumbled sideways into the river bank. Nettle reared up and wrestled the robot, twisting and shaking him with all of her strength. Rico too felt his feet slipping on the rocks. He felt his body tipping over and then he plunged into the white water and he brought Nettle with him. The current immediately swept Nettle toward the falls. She rolled through the rapids, crashed into one rock, and then desperately clambered onto another. Rico too stood straight up and the river rushed around him. He took a step, slipped, and disappeared beneath the water. But then he was up again. Thorn ran to help his sister, but she was pointing up river and roaring, use the logs. When the younger bear turned around, he saw what she meant. A jumble of broken logs were wedged between the rocks of the rapids, and a moment later, Thorn was on top of them. With water sloshing over his back, he forced a paw between the logs and pried the top one loose. It splashed into the river and wound its way down through the rapids only to roll harmlessly past the robot. Then it dropped out of sight. The bear tried again. He popped another log into the river and this one spun just in time to ram its full weight into the robot's chest. Rico too went sailing backward and sank beneath the surface. When he reappeared, the river was full of heavy wooden torpedoes. One log pounded the robot's shoulder. Another slammed his face. More logs knocked, and cl knocked him closer and closer to the falls. The current became too much for the injured robot and it carried him away. He grasped for anything solid he could cling to, but the rocks were too slippery, so he settled for a fistful of fur. Nettle had been hanging onto one rock the whole time, but now that Robot was pulling her, she started losing her grip. She couldn't hang on much longer. Finally, she cried out, I'm sorry, Thorn, and she let go. Nettle and Rico, too, surged toward the rumbling falls. The bear felt the Robot release his grip. She watched him glide over the edge, then she closed her eyes and waited for the end to come. But it was not Nettle's time. Reader, what happened next is hard to believe. You see, the river didn't fall away beneath Nettle. It tightened around her. Hundreds of fish surrounded the bear. They pressed their faces into her fur. They thrashed their tails against the current, and they slowly pushed her away from the edge. Farther and farther they went, gradually moving upriver until Nettle's brother pulled her from the water. The bears collapsed into the riverbank, and when they looked down, they saw hundreds of fish looking back. Thank you, roared Nettle. I'll never eat fish again. The fish smiled and sank into the rapids. I thought you were dead, said Thorn, breathing hard. So did I, Nettle laughed. Look like you're stuck with me for a little bit longer, little brother. I'm not little. It felt so good to joke, but the bears quickly turned serious. They were both bruised and bleeding, and their mother was in far worse condition. However, it would all be worthwhile if Rico too had finally been killed. The bears crept to the edge of the cliff, and there, at the bottom of the waterfall, strewn across the wet rocks, was the shattered body of the dead robot. Mm -hmm.